Hi, everyone. Again, it's Adam Rose with Western Ohio Mortgage. I'm the Vice President and Senior Loan Officer located here in Sydney, Ohio. This is the second episode of the Mortgage Guy podcast, the one where you get to know Western Ohio Mortgage. And with us today, I finally have a guest after last week's episode. You saw my blank chair there. We have Teresa Rose, the owner of Western Ohio Mortgage, and she is mom, a.k.a. T-Bomb. That's right. And uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about the company, her background, ask a few questions about you know some of the common things that we get from clients or maybe real estate agents to try to figure out what's the difference between us and other types of companies, what differentiates us. So to get started, T, how was your day today? What did you uh, do? We did accounting all day today. For? Uh, for just preparing for the audit, which is a whole nother animal in the mortgage business. So that's how I spent my day. It didn't surprise us though, right? Because it's the same time every year. Same time every okay. year. So yep. speaking of that um, in numbers and everything, so how how did you get started in this? What's a little bit of background about yourself? So actually, I like just about everybody else, I fell in it. Most people don't plan to be in the mortgage business. They just fall into it. I went to work for a community bank. The community bank was owned by a mortgage banker, and so that's how I got in the mortgage business. When I started, I, I worked um, you know, as a loan originator, uh, ended up managing a small group, and then as things progressed, I was at the bank for about 12 years. I started there in 1983, uh, and then um, decided to try to go out on my own a little, but went to work for a broker. <clears throat> did that for about four years, and then started Western Ohio in 99. Now, started in Quincy, actually. Yeah, right? so the bank was in the little town of Quincy. They had another office in Lakeview, but most of the manage management was done in Southfield, Michigan, uh, because, uh, you know, Michigan is a very, that whole state has a lot of mortgage banking influence, and a lot of some of the bigger mortgage companies in the country are rooted in the Detroit, Southfield, Michigan, right. Livonia area so started LO started as an LO and then right. you know when I when I went to broker I, I did it because I needed to understand how to work with outside investors and not just the products that the bank had to offer uh, so I did that for four years and happenstance just things just progressed and decided that I was going to start a mortgage banking operation, which, you know, is, is different. I've been in all three areas um, and did that in 1999. Right. So that, that was the start of this company in 1999. That's right. Right. Yep. So how did, how exactly did that come to fruition? You know, what, how'd that start? So the person that owned the bank, that his background was mortgage banking. He really didn't want me to leave the bank and said, hey, why don't you you know, let me help you start your own operation. And that's really why I went to work for a broker, because I needed to get a little bit more acclimated to other parts of the business. And I did that for four years, and he just never really gave up on that pursuit, because I had been a pretty successful loan originator. I, I did good volume. I made the bank a ton of money. And so they didn't want to lose that. Right. Uh, so, because they do what's called warehouse lending, which only people who are in the business are going to know what I'm talking That's about. That's a whole different topic, which whole, we'll probably yeah. cover in the future. Yeah. Um, so, because of that, um, you know, they they basically said, "Look, we're going to give you a warehouse line if you want to start your operation." And so, you know, we incorporated, got everything going, got our warehouse line, and we were off to the races. That's just kind of how that went. Um, but, you know, to, to understand a little bit about what Western Ohio Mortgage is. So we're an independent mortgage banker. Right. Um, there are kind of three different areas. Well, three or four different areas. You have your mortgage broker, you have your independent mortgage banker, and you have your banks and credit unions. And these are the questions we get a lot from right. real estate agents. I don't understand. <clears throat> You're a banker. What, what's the difference between you, a bank, and a broker? I, right. I don't understand. So. When you think about the word broker, whether you're a mortgage broker, a real estate broker, a stock broker, any kind of broker, what you're doing is you're putting a buyer or a client with a lender or a seller. So you're right. putting the two people together, right? You're a broker. So what you're doing is in the mortgage world, if you're a mortgage broker, you, are, you do work for the client, 
and you're trying to find a product or lender who will lend them the money under the best terms you feel you can get for them. Right. But what you don't have in that picture is you have no lending decision. You right, no, no control. Lending, right, no authority to make the credit decision. So when you're issuing your pre-approval letters, they could, they may or may not be able to come to fruition. Generally speaking, a good broker can knows if the loan is going to get approved or not. Right, with experience, a good LO can, right. can pretty much make a good decision on that. Right. But they but, don't really have the control. Right, but if they needed to get a pre-approval letter mm -hmm. officially from who they're sending this loan to, it, it could take longer, right? Because they probably have to send them through a different process. It could, is that, uh, and you have to pivot. Like if you have right. a problem, you can't pivot as quick if you've got somebody else that's making that sure. decision, right? Right. So then you have banks and credit unions. Banks and credit unions, um, their edge or their difference is they also have portfolio products. Right, yep. So portfolio is going to be, they hold it on their books. Those terms are generally not quite as favorable. Um, they A lot of times they'll be adjustable, generally are adjustable, oftentimes a larger down payment, but also they fit a need where maybe you can't, you know, you need that special product in order to get financing. So that's kind of their thing is they have not only the lending authority, but they also have the portfolio products. Where but they have are, the decision-making ability as well at the, the bank. That's the difference between broker and bank right now. Generally, though, surprisingly, uh, there are banks also send out uh, a lot of their government stuff. So not all banks have FHA and VA approval. Sure. Sure. So they'll send them out to an independent or some brokerage to to get those loans approved. Where we fit in the middle <clears throat> is we're kind of a combination of the two. So we have, we are looking out for the client. The loan officer is almost like a broker in the sense that he, he goes out, he mm -hmm. gets the client, he pre-qualifies the client, he knows what is going to fit their needs best. But then because we have lending authority, we are FHA approved, we are VA approved, USDA. We can make those decisions in-house and then we have a closer in-house. We use our own funds to close the loan. So we have a lot more control with what's going on and we can also offer some specialty products that not everybody's doing. So we have kind of the best of both worlds right. uh, in how we operate. And I mean, from, the, from my experience obviously here, I didn't work for a bank before this. Uh, I didn't work for a broker before this, so this is the only world that I know. Um, and understand that being responsible for those loans can come with some consequences on the backside, right? Correct. And we are using monies and funding the loans ourselves, mm -hmm. kind of like what a bank would do. Right. Um, but that's that's a responsibility that would not fall on a broker. And I'm not dissing the brokers out there. I've got plenty of friends that are brokers. Don't take it that way. Um, but just to differentiate how we operate versus some of the other places. Right. right? Correct. So. A broker might be what is called a mini correspondent, right. mm -hmm. mini core, and so they're using um, maybe the lender's line of credit to fund the loan, but they don't have those um, buyback ramifications right. because they that decision was not made by them, um, unless of course there's fraud in the, in the loan, something like that. But for us, we have full responsibility for what happens, soup to nuts, even if six months down the road they pay off early. Or if they default early, we are fully responsible. And that means that we may be in a position of buying back or paying back any monies that we may have collected. We have to pay back to any investor that purchased it. So there's definitely more risk uh, in the independent world, a lot more cost in the independent world than there would be on the broker side. Right. So uh, just for people to understand where we're at, uh, where are we located? You know, what all locations, I know it's, it's changed so much over the last few years, you know, people come and they go and yeah. more people come on and people are working from home. Um, if you want to tell the audience kind of what areas that we cover, so that'd be great. we primarily are West Central Ohio, but we cover the entire state of Ohio. We're licensed in Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Florida, of course. We're adding uh, Michigan. Uh, we're also adding Minnesota. Uh, so those are the states that we can work in today. Um, we we don't have currently plans to branch out much more than right. just that central area of the Midwest. Florida, of course, is always an exception because so many people buy second homes in Florida. Mm -hmm. So many people that are right here in Ohio are going to buy a second home there. 
so we are able to assist them with that. Um, but we have a, a few branches, and we've, we've stayed a small independent um, because it's easier, since I'm a 100% stockholder, it's just easier to manage. Right. Uh, when I mm-hmm. know, uh, you know, at night when I go to sleep, who's doing what, because, you know, there's, there's a lot of regulation in what we do. And if I had to start a, a mortgage banking operation today, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could or, or if I would. It's, it's a The huge, regs, the costs. The, yeah, it's a huge undertaking. Yeah, the legal side of everything and getting everything up and running. And, and, and I some might s- add, I'm not positive about this, but last I knew I was the only female owner in the state. I, I think I'm the only one. I, I don't know that that's changed, but I know at one time I was the only one. Well, maybe some seven of our uh, audience members will be able to <laughs> – comment on that if that's accurate or not you can probably google it it's probably googleable uh but that's that's from an independent side right because there's a lot of brokers out there that do run their own shops and uh, we have some here locally we have some in the dayton market and cincinnati markets of course um but uh that that's really it that's what we wanted to talk about today good successful first time on the show nice job and hopefully they can hear us in this microphone um but we're going to continue on i'm sure Teresa's going to be a guest of ours more than once um, considering Fractor, her office is about 15 feet from here. So anytime I need to pull someone in, I'm like, hey, some guy canceled on me because he never heard of my show. He thought I was a joke. I'll just pull her on. We'll talk about some sort of topics, right? Either a product or, you know, we talked a little bit or we touched on some some terms, you know, like warehouse financing, what are buybacks, things like that, um, that we can go into a little bit more depth because as I mentioned in, in week one, we want to talk about everything mortgage industry we're going to talk about community and what's going on and and other business owners in our area so there's so much to talk about that we could just spend days in here which no one's going to watch that long of a video so hopefully we made it and you are still watching this so uh thank you again for coming on tonight we look forward to having you again and that's going to be it for us remember guys when you're watching the video like it share it Tell everybody about it and subscribe on YouTube as well, and we will see you next week.